You're probably here because you like Naruto, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I do other stuff besides Naruto. But everyone's like, yeah. And then sometimes they're like, oh, you're a real actor. I'm like, I'm an actor. I'll do anything. All actors pretty much do anything. And if they tell you differently, they're lying. Um, I've been an actor for like, uh, professionally for 30 years. And uh, I didn't study acting, clearly. Look at me. Uh, <laughs> this is not trained. Um, but I did improv comedy in college. And I went to college for poli sci and math, um, which was, you know, hard. Uh, but I did this improv comedy thing, and then um, after college, I doodled around a bit, and then I reformed my college. A lot of the people in my group were a year behind me. So I, um, I got them to reform, and we went to Cape Cod, because I went to Boston College, so we knew Cape Cod. So we went to Cape Cod and performed all summer. At the end of the summer, we were like, let's keep going, because we were really good. And everyone's parents kind of had a heart attack, because they were like, that's stupid, because it was. Because I just spent like $40,000 at college, not for acting. Um, so that was an interesting time. Uh, and we reformed our troupe, and then one of the guys was from Minneapolis, so we moved to Minneapolis. Because we're like, New York, uh, and then we're like, you know, we wanted to stay as a group. We thought New York would be hard. Chicago was kind of saturated with, of course, Second City and all that stuff. So we went to Minneapolis because it's a great theater town. And there I started acting. Um, we did our troupe, and then our troupe, uh, we broke up because we were all living in the same house, which, uh, can you imagine? Like, six people in an improv comedy group, 22 years old. And next to us was the Rock and Roll House, which was the members of um, Soul Asylum. Anybody know that band? Yeah? And uh, Soul Asylum and the Jayhawks. And uh, they lived next door. So we were the comedy house. They were the Rock and Roll House. And they were filthy dirty. Um, what kind of filthy dirty? Like, they never, Dave Perner never changed his jeans for one year. Mm. Yep. Uh, but nice and fun. It's kind of fun. Anyway, and I hung around with a bunch of musicians and stuff. So then our group broke up and I started doing theater and stand-up comedy and stuff. And my first role was um, a really big role. I played The Hobbit at Children's Theater Company in Minneapolis, um, which was two hours and 40 minutes long and very, very physical. And uh, I had to wear like under stuff and then fat pads and then uh, stuff over it and then overalls and then a coat and then my shoes, uh, no, special shoes inside hairy, hairy feet. So it was two pairs of shoes and mutton chops and a wig and facial hair. And um, so, and I was much thinner then, but I, each show I would, I was, I would lose like 20 pounds every weekend because I did five shows a weekend and three during the week. And I had to do all my own fight choreography, so I had to fall backwards into an orchestra pit and all that stuff. So, and it was a big deal. The show was a million dollar budget. Children's Theater Company in Minneapolis is huge. It's like a Broadway show. So I did that, and then I kept just performing, and then I moved to Los Angeles about 24 years ago, and um, I started acting, and my commercial on camera agents were like, you should do voiceover. So they told me to take a class, what class to take, one of my agents, who's still my agent, 24 years later. And she said, take this class with this person and this class with this person, and go do your demo with Sue Blue. Sue Blue was the voice of Snow White for years and a terrific director. But what I didn't know until yesterday was Sandy Fox, who's also here, she got her break through Sue Blue as well. And so I did my demo and um, Sue Blue cast me in Men in Black, the series, and Jackie Chan, the series. And it was like all within two weeks. I just had little role, you know, I played a kid and an old crone, that was the name of the character. And um, Jackie Chan, I played a kid. And then I just started working. And then Sue cast me in Jakers, The Adventures of Paper Wings, which I did for five years. I was the lead and I won an Emmy and didn't win an Emmy the second year, which sucked. Uh, and then, um, and I still had day jobs until about, um, 18 years ago, 17 years ago. So I work and sneak away from work and go to audition and then come back. 
Except for then I started getting on TV a lot and they were like, hey, wait a minute, you know. And then, because I was, you know, a good worker, they let me, they were like, they didn't care. But yeah, I did a lot of commercials, a lot, a lot. Like, probably have done over 100 commercials, which you probably won't remember, but do they have Jack in the Box here? Yeah. Yeah. So like two years ago, I did six Jack in the Box spots. You remember me screaming? We've got a craving! Yeah. Remember, huh? Remember that? Yeah. So that was fun. Um, <clears throat> and I do a bunch of TV, like uh, Lab Rats. Anybody seen that? Yeah. And uh, that was really fun. And it kind of everything ended at the same time. So I'm doing kind of my own projects and just auditioning. Anyway, that's the sort of brief version of what, uh, what I've been up to. Um, and I have a couple of movies coming out soon. Um, oh, you guys should check this out. It's fun. There's a horror movie I did, a short, and it's called The Lift. <clears throat> and um, it's on, I think it's on YouTube. Oh, or what's the other one? Vimo. It's on Vimo. It's called The Lift. And the uh, password is BB, because it's protected, but you guys can watch it. And it's really good, it's like 10 minutes long or something. Anyway, that's in a lot of festivals, and then I'm doing a movie Call my babysitter the superhero, or I'm the babysitter and the superhero. Uh, a lot of stunt work in that one, not me. Um, and then another movie called uh, The Three Bears and the Perfect Gift, which is a very G-rated, they're both G-rated, kids movie. Um, it's a Christmas movie, a holiday movie, so that'll be out soon too. First it's coming out, weirdly enough, in like Dubai. I'm like, huh, oh, it's funny, the first buyers are from Dubai and uh, a lot of Arab countries, <laughs> but who knows? Uh, and then next year it'll be all out here in the United States. Um, so, in a nutshell, that's what I've done, but I want to take some questions from you guys, if that's okay, yeah? What do you like about the Naruto character? What do I like about the Naruto character? Pays my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it's a great character. The, the funny thing is a lot of cartoons, like if you look at cartoons, the characters don't age, mm -hmm. right? They always stay the same age, but Naruto does. Naruto ages and grows. And so t that's a completely different, you know, thing. Like most cartoons, they're the same age their whole lives. So, um, and the arc of it is so intense, it's so big, so long, complex, and you get to do every emotion in the world, right? Because he's funny and then he fights, and people die, and. You know, you grieve, and you get electrocuted, and you're, you know, eaten by something, you know, on and on. So it's like, really, it's like the most acting you could ever do in your life. Like, I've done some really big movies, <clears throat> like Yes Man, <clears throat> pardon me, and Evan Almighty, like those kind of big movies. And, you know, obviously Jim Carrey's in like 95% of the movie. So the rest of us get, you know, a few lines, a few scenes. I was in Transformers 4, 4, 3, I don't know, Dark of the Moon, anyone? 3, three. Th a 3, I should know that, because uh, I still get money. Um, Transformers 3, and I had this great scene with John Malkovich. I know, that's like an actor's dream come true. And we were improvising, which is awesome. Uh, here's a funny story about Transformers 3. I auditioned for it, and, uh, um, Michael Bay saw the tape. I, I wasn't in the room with him when I auditioned. And I got the part. And I went to, to film it, and I filmed for 10 days, which is, on a movie, that's a lot of time. Mo most movies shoot in a, unless they're huge features, they shoot in a few weeks, right? Two, three weeks, something like that. So, um, but this is a huge movie. So, I'm there with um, a bunch of other people. We were, play we were like the office mates of Shia LaBeouf his character, whatever that is, I don't know. And, um, he had a name, I guess. Uh, huh? No, his character name? Yeah, nobody cares. So, um, <laughs> you're like, robot, robot, Shia LaBeouf, robot, pretty girl. Um, that's my summary of that. No. Um, but we shot it in Manhattan Beach, California, which is in, like an hour south of where I live, and, um, in the Spruce Goose, which for all you people that are aviation buffs, uh, is where Howard Hughes 
uh, parked his plane. So it's an old airplane hangar, and they've converted it to studios. So we're in this massive, I mean, the office space was <clears throat> about one and a half of these rooms. And they, every desk was great, and every mug was, everything in there was black or white. So I, I got fitted for like, I don't know, I had like, I wish they gave me the suits, but they were all like, um, like $800 business suits that they custom made, you know, it was crazy. And I should have bought them or stolen them, but I didn't. Uh, but anyway, they, um, we go in there and Michael Bay says, there's a group of office people including Ken Jeong, you know, yes. and uh, Andy Daly, who's on a lot of shows, and a bunch of other character actors, and me, and I'm the only girl, only woman. And he, Michael Bay's like, <clears throat> he's like, uh, you guys know what the movie's about, right? And we're like, no, <laughs> because we don't have a script. Because <laughs> they didn't give us one. We're like, no, we don't know what happens. What happens? Because, well, and Michael Bay's kind of like, uh, he's an interesting person. He, he's like brilliant, but sort of socially awkward. Like he might be like kind of on some kind of spectrum, but you don't know which one, right? Like, so he's, he's just this kind of genius. So he, he's like, oh. all right, well, and he mumbles. He's like, oh, there are a bunch of robots and an office building you go in and you work. And robots and the robots. Like, That's about it. Okay, come on, let's go. I was like, what? <laughs> and then we go to shoot in this enormous office, and it's me and Andy Daly. And in this one scene, he's like, all right, you know, he, he's going to go over there and there's an explosion and you're going to go and pick him up. I'm like, sorry? Like, you know, he, and he mumbles everything. In voice of what we call dumping off. And dumping off is when you start talking like this. And it drives me crazy because I teach voice. And I'm like, stop dumping off. It's driving me crazy. I tell my college students, like, stop it. I'm going to the store and I'm going to get some apples. Yeah. So you're always thinking, what's the end? So there's all stunt people and me and Andy Daly who has a protected vest on. And there are explosives all over the office. <laughs> and he's like, give me a bunch of explosives. You know? I'm like, oh, okay, where? You know. It literally was all the stunt people, it wasn't the actors. And so, and because he mumbles, I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do. Like, I literally don't know what I'm supposed to do. Except for I knew I had to go run over there, like way over there, and go, Are you okay? to Andy Daly or something like that. Now Mind you, there's no script and no lines. So they call action, and there are 150 people in the crew, or 200. So 200 people are watching you, and there's all these explosives, which means there's probably one take, maybe two, but two will be in four hours after he said it. So I'm like, ah! Alone, because the stunt people are like, thinking about their stunts, you know? And they have padding on, I don't. And so I'm standing there, and the camera's way back there, and, or kind of way over there, I guess, shooting on him. And he calls action, and all of a sudden, these explosives go off all around me. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> And then I'm like, what do I do? <clears throat> and then I see a huge one go off, and Andy Daly falls down, and I go, and I go, I go, are you okay? But it was all real, because I was like, what the hell is happening? Because nobody told me where the explosives were. And, and it was just stunt people, and they all had done the stunt. They'd already practiced it, so everything I did was real because I was freaked out. <laughs> I don't think I made it in the movie. The only thing in the movie that I made ended up was, you hear my voice screaming. Oh, I had a great scene with Ken Jeong, too. And I watched his character jump out a window, which was the stunt man at that point. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is crazy. You know, it's just like, wah! And I'm like, ah! <laughs> because he never, ever told me what was happening. <laughs> so I'm in an elevator, and Kim Jong's, Ken Jong's behind me with Andy Daly, me and a bunch of extras. Uh, and he's like, get in the elevator and say, uh, oh, another shitty day. I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, and I think I had to do crappy day, because he, he wanted a better rating, I don't know. 
So I'm right here, the camera's right here, and it was the camera they filmed Avatar on, which was a big deal, because it's a new, big million dollar camera. So the doors of the elevator open, I'm like, oh, not a shitty day, huh? Yeah, okay, do it again. I'm like, not a shitty day, huh? Cut, do it again. Not a shitty day, huh? And then he's like, eh, we're in between, and it's, 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 uh, action. And he goes, honey, I'm like, what? Because I can't understand what I'm supposed to say or do. I'm like, I'm sorry, I can't. Are you, are you talking to me? You know. And meanwhile, there are 150 crew members in the parking lot standing. And um, he's like, what? I'm like, are you talking? Are you talking to me? Am I supposed to do something? He's like, no, 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 no. I'm just replaying the movie in my head. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> so. And it took like two hours for them to set up the shot. And we're all crammed in an elevator. And there are 150 people working on the crew. And he's like, huh. I'm like, uh-oh, you know, this is when I get fired? I'm not sure. But he goes, eh, well, hmm. They'd spent hours. So he's like, yeah, the movie's going to be released on the 4th of July weekend. Huh? Nobody wants to see people in an elevator, it's boring. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and so we all left, went back to our holding area, uh, and sat there for the next 10 hours. I don't know what they were doing, but, but I couldn't believe I was on that movie because all, there were 200 extras, right? About 100 went, 150 women and 50 dudes, I'd say. And I saw him go through and pick out the extras he wanted in the big office, sitting at the desk. And every single one of those extras looked like Miss Columbia. <laughs> it was like, Jesus, what? And they all had like Manalo Blonic, what, how do you say those stupid shoes? They're like $800 heels. And they were like six inches tall, they're like, hello. They were all models and he had picked them by hand and then re-picked the ones he wanted in the scene. And me. <laughs> So when you look at that movie again, look closely at the extras. They're like Miss Columbia, and I'm the only other woman besides Rosie Hunt Whitley, who's Shia LaBeouf's love and I don't know, co-worker. I don't know. I don't know what the movie's about. It's just robots. Apparently those movies are about robots. Nobody cares about a character actress who's pudgy in her late 40s. Anyway, that's that story. All right. Yeah. Um, I got two for you. No. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first one is your worst fear. My worst fear? Yeah. <gasps> Breaking my jaw. Yeah? And then, yeah, uh... I like the reaction, and that was good. I, I've never said that out loud, but I had a friend in high school who was a football player, and he got tackled, and he broke his jaw. And he had to have it, uh, wired shut. Damn. You know how you drink milkshakes the whole time? Yeah. I probably shouldn't say that because it's probably going to happen on my car ride home. Uh, it's not going to happen, right, universe? Yeah. And then uh, the second one is uh, with Naruto. Uh, Naruto. Uh, yeah, no, Naruto. Naruto. You got it. Um, what would be your dream supergroup to form with him, like out of, uh, other anime characters? I don't watch other anime. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Next. <laughs> Sasuke, Sasuke, Sasuke. Why is it always all about Sasuke? <laughs> That's what it is. Um, I don't know. Is there a volunteer in here? No. That guy was supposed to give me a, a water and he didn't. You want me to get some water? Oh, there you are, Tyra. Hi. Can you give me a glass of fire water? Thank you. Um, someone over there. Yeah, yeah. The one that pays the most? <laughs> Things where you go on location to Paris for two months? Um, I honestly, the character on Lab Rats was, it, it was supposed to be one episode and I ended up doing almost 70, I think. And they wrote it for me. Like the first episode, it was just, she was like, you know, actually, this is a funny acting story. You want to hear it? Do you? Okay, uh, the uh, character was written as 
the principal on roller skates, right? And she would roller skate in the school because the kids were in school. So I got the audition through my manager and agents, and I read it. And I called her, my manager, and I said, um, I, I don't know how to roller skate. I can't. I tried. I can't. She's like, well, I think that's OK. I'm like, OK. So I kind of panicked. And I said, can, can you please tell them I really don't know how to roller skate? I'm like, don't worry about it. So I go to the first, I go to the audition, and I said to the assistant outside, I said, FYI, I hope my agent told you, I, I can't roller skate. Right? And they're like, ah, that's not a problem, don't worry about it. So I go in the room, thank you, Tyler. Appreciate it. Um, I go in the room, and I kill him, right? It's really funny. The, the writing was spot on, um, and it was just for the one episode. And um, they were laughing, and I left. And um, then they called. They said, well, you're pinned, which means you're on hold for this week to do this show. And I'm like, awesome. And I said to them, will you tell casting I don't know how to roller skate? And they're like, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it. So <laughs> the first day, so I, and they're like, well, we want you to try. I'm like, have you seen me? Like, OK. So I went to like a sporting store, and I bought roller skates. And all weekend long, <laughs> because I was starting on Monday, found out on Friday. I roller skate, tried to roller skate, I smashed into the walls of my house, in the hallway, I just wham, fall, wham, fall. I was like, this is crazy. So I get to this show, I kill him at the table read, and then they said, okay, now you're gonna go talk to uh, Rex. Like, who's Rex? I'm like, he's a stunt coordinator. I'm like, okay. He's like, all right, we're gonna teach you to roller skate. And I'm like, good luck. So then they 